Hi, and welcome to the Tomato Timer, a podcast about learning to learn. I'm Z from Xenos, and I'm tuning in live with experts around the world, asking your questions and hearing their stories, all before the timer goes off. 24 minutes and 39 seconds to go. It's my pleasure to welcome back a guest who was actually a team member not that long ago, Krish. He used to help out with Z class, and he was he managed the whole of kind of the, uh, if you guys have checked out Zeno's YouTube account, that a lot of the content creation and collation, all that kind of stuff, that was Krish's responsibility. So it's a pleasure to have him back on. Krish. Lovely to be back for the podcast. So, yeah. As a guest this time. Yeah. So we have a couple of questions from the community. Mm-hmm. And I, I wanted to start off, though, because I knew even while you were um, involved with Zeno's that you were very passionate about interior designing, which is mm-hmm. quite well, it's it's it might not be the most common uh, interest that most people have. So mm-hmm. I just love to mm-hmm. kind of first pick your brain on that. How how did it all start? How did you get passionate about it? Okay, so um, twenty fifteen, I'm getting my room uh, redone, and I'm working with uh, like as a point of view of the client, I'm working with an architect, and I'm working with some contractors, and it's all going okay. And then towards the end, what happens is everyone's delaying on timelines they're not delivering in terms of quality and stuff that had explicitly been mentioned that had to be done was being done but stuff that was like common sense like it was implied was not and so i realized that there, that like i can come in and i can do a lot of this stuff so i was like okay i'm going to like okay you didn't do the door frame properly i'm going to go and build it myself so then i started building the door frame and then, like, after, like, five days, I'm like, okay, I'm, maybe I'm not the best carpenter in the world, but maybe I can find another one. So then I I started working with other people and stuff like that. And then slowly the whole thing develops. So, like, it all started from a personal need. And then I just kind of realized that I enjoy doing it so much that I it's, like, the one thing I would do even if I had, like, a million dollars or as much money, like, all the money in the world. I was still doing interior design. So that's kind of how it came about. That's pretty interesting. Uh, especially because it came out of a need rather than just an idea. So in in terms of like inspiration, do you have any kind of like specific styles that you are interested in or, um, and how do you, do you go about like learning all the skills required, mm-hmm. um, whether it's like color choices and, and I don't know, there's so much to talk about, but like give us a little bit more about mm-hmm. what's inspired you in terms of the design choices that you make. Um, generally, I like to look at um, Pinterest or something like that. So as of now, I'm not really a designer, so which is why I say I'm an aspiring interior designer because I'm not so good on the design front, which is what I'm going to go to university to learn. I'm, I'm, I'm what I am really good at is the implementation and working with contractors. But in the past, on my projects that I've done, um, when I looked for design, it's Pinterest, or I have a lot of design books. There's I'm subscribed to Architect that really Digest. Cool. Uh, um, yeah. I bought a book recently on Bauhaus design, which is like a minimalistic thing, which came about in Nazi Germany. <laughs> Interesting. And yes, it, I'm not really that much of a designer right now. I'm more of an implementer, which is a skill set that is at least required in India because the labor isn't as skilled as it normally as it is throughout the world. But so I'm more of an imp- like a like a implementing person at the moment. But I'm, I definitely want to learn design, so that's what I'm going to university for. So uh, tell us a bit more about university. What what are you going to study exactly? What's the plan? So the plan is uh, to join this uh, Italian design school, which is based in Bombay. Like they have a Bombay branch as well. Uh, it's called Istituto Marangoni. And uh, the plan is I can do either, I, I can, I could, I'm going to do one year in Bombay for sure. And then I have to choose between doing the next two years in London or the next year in Bombay and then the last year in Milan. So as of now, I'm leaning more towards Milan. So that's basically what I'm going to do. And it's an interior designer course. Just one more question on yep. kind of continuing on interior designing idea. There's something you talked about um, automation and, and using Alexa mm-hmm. to kind of use home automation. Tell me a bit more about that. Okay, so this is pretty, pretty cool. So when Alexa came about in the US, um, I think it was 2017 when it became pretty mainstream. Um, I really wanted to get it because I thought it was so cool that you could talk. It was like It was like Siri, but it was so much better. Like, it responds so much better. So so I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. And then it was complete luck. I had someone coming from the US. And at this time, Alexa had not been launched in India. So I was like, mm, I don't know if it's going to work. And this is absolutely like complete stroke of luck. The night I order it, Alexa launches in India. 
like excellent so this is like yeah perfect timing right so um basically what happened then is i got it and i got this other like like physics students know what a relay is right like a yeah so it's basically a vi i got this other device which is a wi-fi relay and then i used igcse physics whatever i remember to wire that wi-fi relay onto an existing circuit that I had and it took like five hours to get the whole thing to work because I don't I'm not an electrical engineer or anything like that but I sat there for five hours to like three o'clock in the morning and I got it to work and I was like this is amazing it doesn't cost a lot to do uh, hardware wise you just need an Alexa device and the programming is super easy it's completely intuitive anyone can do it but then people are not doing it because they think it's complicated and there's stuff like Philips Hue in the market that's so expensive um I was like, why aren't people buying this? So I started, like, I put a lot of them in my own house. And then I had this friend's uh, person, this, this friend's uncle that wanted it. And then plus I have this other guy that wants it. And then now my electrical supplier was like, this is so cool that you're doing this. Let's set up a demo station at my showroom. And then clients can come in and then we can work together kind of like a joint venture. Exactly. Wait, so, so tell us like, exactly what, what part of... um. So uh, I, if people don't know what the Philips Hue is, it's it's kind of like a a smart light bulb, I guess. Uh, it just it has yeah. it's an LED light bulb. It has it can do all the colors, and you can just control it with your phone or your watch or whatever. Exactly. So um, so what what is it exactly that you're what 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 part of the house were you automating? Was it lights or was there electricity or or a specific machine or something like that? Lights, fans, I can do air conditioners as well as um, televisions and stuff like that. But the, the issue with that is the device that connects to that is fairly advanced, but Alexa doesn't give you a lot of options to control the device. Like you can tell Alexa to change the channel on your television. And also it's a lot easier to just press it on the remote. Like it's just a lot easier. But air conditioning, you can program as a thermostat. And then, you know, so air conditioning, light and fans with the, device that I'm working on right now that you can't control the fan speed, but that's because at least for what I've seen, people just like to keep the fan at a certain speed and turn it on and off. So it's lights, fans, air conditioners, televisions, stuff like that. Nice, nice, nice. That's, mm -hmm. so, and could you do it remotely as well? So could I do it if I'm like driving home and I feel like my room should be cooler before I get there? So can I switch, it up, switch my air conditioning on? Absolutely. Perfect. You can do it from anywhere in the world. Like uh, when I had gone on holiday recently, what I did was just to like make sure people thought I was home. I used to toggle the lights on and off, like when I was away, to make it look like there's someone at home. <laughs> Smart. Yeah. 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 And, but now even Alexa has a feature for that. So you just say you're away and then it automatically turns stuff on and off. So it's pretty cool. Nice. So essentially what you were able to do is kind of like use, uh, if, I, I were, if I were to call it, dumb devices and just use a Wi-Fi relay and kind of smarten them up and give them abilities to communicate with uh, a voice assisting technology or any kind of automation system like Alexa. Exactly. And then what I'd also do is uh, use like infrared blasters that are Wi-Fi enabled for televisions and air conditioning. And I, think gotcha. what's, uh -huh, and I think what's like super interesting about this is that a lot of solutions that are being offered in the market right now are for new installations. So you, let's say you're building a mm. house, like a new house, then you can put this in. What makes my, what I do so special is that it can go into any house with any wiring. Like for instance, my house is about 14 years old, like the one that my parents' house, the one I live in. So it yeah. easily went in there. But then I did this other one where um, the building was like, God knows, like 50 years old. It worked there as well. Wow. And if, you're, if it's a new device, then all the better. So it, it, it just, it's so amazing because it can fit onto anything. You have to just have electricity. That's basically what you need. And why? Well, yeah, that, that, yeah. That's really cool. Um, uh -huh. So maybe we'll like circle back. But I, I kind of wanted to I remember one of the reasons. So I, I was able to meet Krish in real life in London. Mm -hmm. Was it this summer, right? Uh, yeah. Just, oh, no, this uh, this autumn we met at the restaurant. Yeah. So it was pretty cool because I'd worked with Krish. Obviously, I'd spoken to him and we'd worked for over a year together. And finally, we, we met face to face in London. So it was really cool. Um, and one of the things we talked about together was this idea of, I guess, financial literacy, financial understanding and financial independence. Some things that aren't really taught at school and yet are so mm -hmm. crucial to 
to our daily lives. So it, it's weird, you know, so many things that are applicable to, you know, day to day. Like as mm -hmm. soon as I got to you, I was like, you know, I had to work out how to manage my expenses and how to budget, how to, you know, well, the other stuff is like cooking and do gro doing groceries and planning your meals mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and, then, and now it's, it's even more complicated with stuff like, you know, if you want to, uh, if you have, you know, extra money, do you put in a savings account, what type of savings account? Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm blabbering. But the point <laughs> is that there's just a lot of things, um, obviously, in, in all aspects, like things like legal stuff and, and kind of mm -hmm. voting and uh, governmental stuff, but in specifically financial stuff that we should all have a basic understanding of. And yet school does not prepare us at all for it. And as soon as we, mm -hmm. whether it's uni or it's our first job, we're suddenly left in the blind of how to manage mm -hmm. our expenses, manage all these things. So um, I, I really enjoyed talking about that. And I wanted to hear more about mm -hmm. kind of your understanding and, and what, if there's anything that you could tell us and kind of give us primer on at least at this stage. Sure. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, I think it's super important for you to understand um, a couple of things. The first being inflation. So I don't think people realize how much inflation is a killer. And this might sound absolutely weird. Like, what is this guy talking about? We're just going into university. Why is he talking about inflation and stuff like that? You know, but it's really important to understand because what happens is with inflation, essentially the value of your money is going down all the time. What this means is unless you're investing, you are taking a risk. So a lot of times people say, oh, I'm just going to keep it in my bank account because like, uh, it's not, I don't want to put it in the stock market. I don't want to put it in a mutual fund or something like that because it's, I risk losing it. But what they don't see is the hidden element of it is that by just letting it sit, you are essentially mm -hmm. losing it. So the first thing, the, which is the most important thing, is inflation is a killer and you need to prepare yourself against it. So whatever you're doing, you need to make sure you're investing a certain amount of money for your future goals. And whatever those goals are have to be adjusted for inflation. And additionally, what you want to look at is if you're investing for a certain goal, you also need to be spending certain money right now, right, for your, to meet your current expenses. And when you talk of about course. current ex exactly right, so when you talk about current expenses, you need to understand that um, certain expenses are required expenses, certain expenses are not required expenses. Now, obviously, anyone can understand that going out and like going out for to a drink for a drink or something like that isn't is is a discretionary expense. But it's important yeah. to make that discretion and actually come up with a monthly budget of what you're spending that money on. I'll give you an example. I didn't know how much money I was spending about a year ago um, on like eating out and stuff. And I, I estimated the number to be a certain number. And then I actually did the math. My number was actually much lower than what it was. So when I was saying that, oh, I'm spending a lot of money or, oh, I'm not, or yeah, oh, I'm spending a lot of money. I, did, I realized that that's not actually because of my eating out. It was because of other necessary expenditure. And what's important is to realize that you can control the discretionary expenditure, but you cannot control the the necessary expenditure because that's why it's necessary. So what it's important to do is make a budget, understand what you're spending every single rupee, dollar, pound on, and then actually write down. So that's so basically what you so the the budget is going to be a what in accounting what we call is a forecast, and then. Okay. As you spend the actual cash going in and out, that is going to be your actual cash flow statement. And then you want to tally the two up and look at, you thought you're going to spend this much on this, but you spent this much on this. And, but so basically the idea is to make a comparative analysis and then realize where, where you're spending what on, if you need to cut out on something, where should it be cut out, etc. So I think it's super important to come with a forecast budget. See, this is how much I think I'm spending. And also, this is how much I can spend, and this is how much I'm actually spending. So then see how much can I spend within the limit that I have to, to attain a fairly comfortable life and a standard of living. And that's super important because people go into jobs and they're like, oh, my God, I made this money. I can spend the whole thing. I'm just going to buy clothes. No, 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 no. You don't want to do that because time is your best. It's, it's your best um, friend at this. I don't know. Have you heard this Albert Einstein quote about compound interest today? 
Um, no, tell me. It, it, I don't remember the exact quote, but basically, it goes some, some it goes something along the lines of okay, I'll I'll read it out actually. It says, "Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it. He who doesn't pays it." So you got a, a degree in algebra, right? <laughs> Wait, is that actually? Yeah, I I didn't think that he did anything to do with business related stuff. Any of his courses? Uh, I don't. Yeah, That's pretty I don't cool. Think he actually did anything related to it, but this is just something he kind of realized. At least his cosmological models of the universe so, definitely yeah. um, understand exponential growth. So yeah, yeah, yeah I, exactly. I think he understood what that meant. <laughs> what that meant exactly. So you know that if you have an if you have a summation function where you're increasing the num the the the, the money you're putting into to an exponential growth system every year, and the rate goes and the rate stays the same, but what so op- so you know what I'm talking about, right? Like uh, yeah. So I, Sorry, I couldn't make that clear enough if I didn't. So basically what's happening is if you miss out on a single payment in initial years, that will result in massive well, notional losses in the in the later years. So let's say you don't put out a certain amount initially. That amount, if it was put out to be invested, would have become a much larger amount later on. Yeah. And missing out on a payment for your investment would basically result in large notional losses and have long-term repercussions. So you need to make you make sure you put money aside for investment. It's like a need, like just like you need to eat food, you need to do that. I mean, unless you plan to become a saint and living off like some monk or something like that, I don't know. But like, like you, if you're like a normal person, you definitely need to put aside money for investment. <laughs> And how you get into that is a whole nother thing. I, I don't want to get into that right now, how to calculate, because then this is no longer tomato timer. This is finance talk. So I don't want to get into that. <laughs> I, I maybe a much longer than 25 minutes. Yeah, but yeah exactly. It, that sounds slightly intimidating, even for me right now. So um, personally, the only thing I did when I came here was to work out what can I do. Um, I, I kind of have like a broad budget in my head about what, what costs I have per, per month or per week. Um, and the main kind of main expenses that kind of the, the things that you talked about, the expenses that aren't exactly necessary, but you know, you want to enjoy your time as well. So you, what you exactly. can spend on. And then, uh, but even now uh, I haven't, uh, spent an, or even thought a lot about investment just because it seems like an intimidating kind mm-hmm. of area, uh, especially because mm-hmm. for a lot of people, and I'm sure, uh, like, some some of you on the podcast will be thinking the same. Like it seems like something that either super rich or super old people do it, rather than you know people like me and you. And especially if we're not even at uni yet, um, at the age of like at the age of fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, you know, should we even be thinking about it? Try to um, so to this intimidated person, mm-hmm. e.g. me, uh, make make it sound a bit, make it make it, um, make it seem a bit sweeter. What okay. can you, what can you like, how can you mellow it down for me? Okay, basically, it's pretty simple. You're a person, you're not going to work for the entirety of the time you're alive, correct? That's true. So there's going to be a point. To do it as long as possible. But... <laughs> as long as possible, of course. But there's going to be a point where your income from your basic, like your job or your your business is not going to be able to meet current expenditure. Is that correct? Yep. And what's happening is you need to put aside money to make sure you can meet that expenditure. All you're doing when you're investing is you're saying, I'm going to put this much money aside. And the matter of the fact is putting it aside in that investment gives me a better rate of interest than a bank. So as opposed to putting it in a bank, this investment will grow at a greater value. So you're essentially putting your money to better use, correct? Correct. So essentially what I'm what you're trying to say is that if you can use your money in a more efficient manner, you should be. Granted the risk is slightly more, but like I said, with inflation, at times you're even losing money putting in a savings account in a bank. Yeah. So essentially you're just trying to meet you're just trying to meet your expenditure at a point where current income will not meet current expenditure. You're just putting aside money for that. It's not an intimidating thing. It's not a thing rich people do. Well, they definitely do it because that's how they probably got rich. 
But <laughs> I'll tell you, I know. Continue to get richer. Exactly. But I, I went to this conference a while ago, and I saw these people who seemed perfectly financially able. It was in a posh part of town, everything. And, like, they were like, oh, my God, I didn't save up money and stuff like that. So just because they're living, a, like, or someone who appears rich who's living a certain standard of living, that doesn't necessarily mean they're investing. And it's definitely not something that old people do because, like Albert Einstein said, if you start out, basically, if you start out late, it's not going to really help you because that money isn't going to compound to the degree it could be. Like, it's an exponential curve, you know. How that works. Absolutely, yeah. So it's a need, and it's not intimidating. You need to figure it out. You need to figure out how much money you need to meet that. And like I said, I don't want to get into that right now, but we could work on something in the future to kind of educate students. But basically, you need to put some money aside to meet future expenditure when you can't meet it with current income level. Hmm. That that seems that, that's the reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Um, and as you know, uh, the, the Pomodoro is ticking away. Um, so just yeah. being aware of that, I want to kind of move slightly further ahead from just kind of um, the financial side of stuff and talk about. Well, I'll ask you a question: whether you whether there's any spe- thing specifically that you want to share um, in terms of your experience as like being aware of all these kind of. Um, Know, the workings of the financial world and how you got into it, but also anything aside from that, would you like to share to us with us? Um, sure. Or we could even take questions if you like from the guys that they put in. Well, I, I've, I've been watching, uh, and it's more comments, which is which are some really important things. Like even budgeting can be simply it doesn't have to be super formal. It can just be quite like, uh, yeah, not at all. Yeah. I maintain my budget on the notes app on the iPhone. Like that's how simple mm. my budget is. So it doesn't is it doesn't need to be something like an Excel sheet so, where we have to like start. No, 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 no. I don't even like Excel sheets because I think Excel sheets are super complicated for stuff like compound interest. It's much easier to use a scientific calculator. I use the one I use for my IGC, well, IGCSE and A levels to do all my calculations. Yeah, I still have that. Even though at this yeah, point so, I haven't I haven't had a mm-hmm. use of the calculator anymore. Still still use it for the basic calculations. <laughs> yeah. So, oh yeah, is there anything else I want to share um, and how I got? So basically the thing is um, in, the ninth, in the ninth grade, when I had to choose subjects for IUCSEs, my school gave me a choice between accounting and economics. And then I took accounting because my parents are both chartered accountants. So, um, okay. yeah, so then because I was like, okay, if, I, if, if I'm struggling with it, they can help me out. And also you, you've got to do your taxes. So it's always a useful skill to have. So um so I, I did that. And then that subject changed my view of everything. Until recently, I thought I was going to become an investment banker or something. Honestly, I liked it so much. <laughs> and there was a whole nice. other thing about like discovering my true passion of interior design or whatever. But the thing is, I got introduced to this. And then what I realized was, and then I had this book. My dad gave me this book called Retire Rich at 40 Rupees a Day. And that book changed the way I look at investing and everything. I was like one, someone like, oh, you don't need to invest. That's for like rich people. Well, that's for people that like old people I had those views and reading that book changed my views about this entirely so I would highly recommend reading the book if you can get your hands on it or get an ebook or something like that and th- that talks about like a lot of detail about how you should put aside money etc and like this one time like so someone saw me reading a book at Starbucks retire rich and they were like you're so young why are you reading this book <laughs> man like <laughs> you know what I mean right but but then when I went for the conference that was done by the author of the book, the, my, uh, the guy was like, no, he's the guy that should be reading these book, this, this book, not you people in your 40s and 50s who are like, I need to scramble to put some money aside. So I think the biggest thing I can say is you need to start mm-hmm. young. It's Time is your best friend. That's, an, that's a really good point. Could you, um, uh, but at the end of the podcast, we'll also try and find a link to the book and put it in the channel. It sounds like a really interesting book to read, and just you're absolutely right. And it's, it's at this stage we can put little little pots of money away, and still, by the time that we are going to be, you know, <laughs> when we would need it, or when we would like, you know, when when our expenditure wouldn't be meeting our incomes, that'll probably be very useful. So I think that wraps it up. We have we've just hit twenty five. Um, so thank you so much, Chris, for being with us, and it's been a bit short. It was, um, it's been such a good and in, like, quick insight into finances. Glad to be here. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Bye bye.
And that's another episode of the Tomato Timer. If you'd like to ask your questions and join us live next week, join the Zenodes Discord server. The invite link is in the description. And to learn more about Zenodes and how a bunch of students are on a mission of making quality education available to all, go to zenodes.org. Bye for now.